Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to 1922 Project. My name is Kelly. I have a hair in my mouth. Um, I am today working on a project doing some of those burp cloths that have the fabric. So here's, here's one embroidered. Um, I have two fabrics. I haven't decided which one yet, but I'm going to add some fabric down here. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And originally, um, I also have a, uh, a UT one, University of Texas. Um, originally, I wasn't going to show you guys the embroidery portion of it. I was just going to show you the uh, putting on the fabric part. But uh, I just realized as I was getting ready to sew the third one, that we're going to do three of these today, that uh, there's something in Embrilliance that I think is the most important tool that you will use. And I may or may not have done it in other videos, but I wanted to be, I wanted to have a video that's very specific for this skill. Um, it's really kind of a hack for lack of a better word. Um, but if you, ha I, if you have even the free version of Embrilliance, you should be able to do this. Um, and it's just a way of manipulating designs to get exactly what you want. So before I embroider this third one, I want to take you guys over to the computer and show you what I did to get exactly what I wanted because I just didn't have the exact design and I didn't want to spend money to get something different. So let's go over to the computer. If you're new here, please subscribe. We do all kinds of fun embroidery and sewing things here. This one's going to be um, a little bit of both. We're going to embroider first and then we'll sew. So let's go over to the computer. Okay, so here's what I'm putting on the third burp cloth, but this is not what it looked like when I started. Um, the, the monogram itself is just a monogram I have, but I wanted to add this, but the original, let me open the original. Um, let's, well, if I can find the original, hang on. Excuse all of my open tabs here. Okay. So the original one had these flowers and of course it's, you know, wacky colors too, but that part, that part we're not going to worry about. I wanted to get rid of these flowers. I think they're cute, but it just wasn't looking the way I wanted it to. So, uh, I came over here and I did, uh, my computer's been acting funny all day, so please excuse me if I get stuck. So all you have to do is click on the elements you don't want. So I don't want that, and then I don't want that. Here's the problem. I, want to, I need to get rid of these red dots, but my birds are red too. So the machine's gonna sew all of, you know, it considers this one element. Well, if I delete it, you know, I get rid of my birds too, and I want the birds. So all you have to do is, and I don't remember, I, I didn't know this for the longest time, and when I discovered it, it just opened up a whole host of opportunities. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, <clears throat> if you go up here to your stitch simulator, which is this uh, needle right here that has the three dots or something, um, and you just move your little toggle, what, do you, what is that called, slider? Um, we know that the red is going to start all of this. So it does the three dots and then it starts the birds, okay? So all you have to do is go to where it stops doing the three bird, I mean the three dots. And if you, if moving the slider moves you too far ahead like that does, you can go over here to these two triangles. I know it's probably hard to see my uh, cursor. But go over to these two triangles and I'm just gonna back it up until my, uh, can you guys see? I know it's not um, that easy to see, but there's a little crosshair right there. And it's at the very, see if I move forward one, it moves it over there to where the birds start. So I wanna back it up just one. I hit stop and then change the color. Change, it doesn't matter, change it to anything. So I'm going to change it to reddish brown and then boom, now my birds are reddish brown, 
the dots are red, I can go over here, I can click on the red, and I can delete them. And now I only have the elements that I want in my design. It's really just that simple. It's all about this, uh, the stitch simulator. Now, sometimes I'm trying to think, I did it on something else too. Um, sometimes you might have to stop it in two places. Like if it stitched, like say all three of these were the same and it stitched the bow and then it stitched the dots and then it stitched the birds. Well, you'd have to stop it before the dots and after the dots to be able to delete it. But on this one, since it started with my dots, I only had to stop it one time. So you stop it, change the color, and then it becomes something different. That's it, easy breezy. Okay, now as far as hooping these um, burp cloths, by the way, I just bought these at Joann's because I had a coupon. So for four of them, it was like, you know, four bucks or something. Um, and what I did is I folded it in half and then I ironed it so that I'd have a line. And I'm just gonna use that. Um, again, we're gonna have fabric down here. So I wanna place my monogram kinda high. If you weren't doing fabric, you, you, know, you might wanna put it down here or something. But for mine, I'm gonna put it up here uh, so that I have plenty of room for the fabric. So I just uh, ironed it to create a line. And then um, I use my Easy Frames with Sticky Stabilizer. You could do, I would definitely do a tear away of some sort, uh, but it doesn't have to be sticky and you can certainly hoop uh, with a regular hoop. I do recommend um, that you use that you float regardless of, you know, how you, what hoop you use, you're gonna wanna float this. I was concerned at first, and I'm just gonna take that line, I want it pretty high up, and I did flip, I flipped it so that this part will be up against the machine because it's shorter than this. So when I, when I put my design in, I'll have to rotate it. But um, I want it up as high as I can go. And then, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so it is double thickness right here and I was worried about that at first, but it's it, it stitches out fine. So just either press it down or if you're not using sticky, you can spray it with some adhesive spray and stick it on, but make sure at least, you know, these sides that are single layer are pretty well stuck down. You can also add a couple of clips if you're worried about things shifting. I just got these at my favorite place, the Dollar Tree, um, but any kind of clip you have will help keep this on. Again, it's gonna be different if you're using a different hoop if you're using the hoops that come with your machine, you might wanna put some uh, uh, pins in it to keep it uh, floated well, or again, use that basting spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this out off camera just to get it done and so that we can move on to the fabric portion. Okay, so it turned out pretty cute. It's a little smaller um, than my other ones, but it was so wide I didn't really want to go outside of this stitching line, so I could have made it a little bit bigger, but it's cute. Uh, so I'm going to put this fabric down here to finish this off. Now, this is a very beginner-friendly sewing project, so if you've been doing some embroidery and you're you know, new to sewing, this should still be pretty easy for you. Um, because we're just sewing four straight lines. But what we're gonna do, uh, I cut my piece of fabric about an inch wider and about six inches uh, tall. But, so it's 14, I think, because I think this is about 13. So it's about 14 wide and six tall, but you can do whatever. I mean, there's no real formula. Um, I just wanted it to be as thick as I could get it. I like it to be, you know, to take up as much as the burp cloth as possible. So the first thing that we're gonna do 
is we are going to, oh, and the other thing is you really want to cut this with a uh, rotary cutter. The burnt cloth itself does not, is not gonna have straight seams. So we're not gonna be able to use the burnt cloth itself. The sides are okay, but these ends are not ever gonna be straight. See how that wonky that is? So we need to be able to use this as our straight lines. So um, if you, you know, if you have a rotary cutter, be sure to cut it with your rotary cutter. Um, my table is unsteady here. Uh, cut it with that. If not, just at least one of your long ends, try to make as straight as possible because you're going to use that for your bottom seam. Uh, if you have directional fabric, you're going to want to uh, pay attention to which is top and which is bottom. On the top end of your fabric, we're going to go ahead and fold it over about a quarter of an inch and iron it down. Uh, we're not going to sew anything just yet, but this will kind of be like a memory press. You're probably better off to do this with a little bit of steam. My iron uh, is the cheapest one that you can buy at Walmart, or one of the cheapest ones you can buy at Walmart, and uh, it does not steam very well, so I need to, at some point, invest in a nicer... I used to have one of those, um, what are they called, Ro, Rowenta or Rowinta or whatever, the R one. And I loved it, but it kind of crapped out pretty quickly for something that expensive. So, we got the good old Walmart Black & Decker here. Um, so, that's pretty straight. Uh, just make sure that what you've pressed is straight. Uh, if you're really, really new and you're not confident in your sewing, you could use some like washable uh, double-sided tape to do this, but that looks pretty good to me. So we've ironed that. Now we're going to take our burp cloth and you're going to want to flip it over to the wrong side. So wrong side facing you. And then we're gonna take our fabric, put it, um, put it right side down, but put the, make sure what you just ironed is up closer to your design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew, kind of center it. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch from the bottom. See how this is all wonky here? You have to use your uh, cotton fabric as your line while you're sewing. And I don't pin a lot of stuff when I'm sewing, but I do pin these because it just is too easy for that burp cloth to shift a little bit. And uh, it'll just make your life a lot easier. I'm gonna do my pins this way. If you um, pin it first, you don't have to pin it much, just a few to keep it from moving along. And you can also use, um... oh, hang on guys, I've got this upside down. Hey, hold please. My design, we're putting our fabric down here. Sorry about that. So, but again, we're still on the back side. We're putting it here, centering it so you have a little bit of a seam allowance over here. You can also make your um, fabric a little bit wider if you're concerned about that, but that looks pretty good. We might scooch it just a smidge, and then like I said, we're going to pin it. So let's take this over to the sewing machine once I've finished pinning. So we've got our just one stitch line right here 
And again, uh, I used the edge of the cotton fabric, not the edge of the burp, burp cloth, as my reference point to get that one quarter uh, seam allowance. Now we're going to stay on the back side for just a minute and go ahead and press this down. It'll just help you get a better straight line when you flip it over. And then flip it over. And now you can see, start to see what it's going to look like. Let me... So we're going to look like that. And then on the sides... I have seen people, uh, let me flip it back over. I've seen people go ahead and sew these sides too. I don't like the way that that looks. The problem is, is that then your, your burp cloth gets caught in that seam allowance and you get a little bit of a fold there because you're not, you're only sewing down here, not up here. Um, so I do it this way. You can do it either way. Um, you know, it is a handmade item, so people aren't expecting it to look factory made. So we've got that pretty nicely that we pressed. And then you just flip this in, keeping your top still folded. And press it down. You're going to have a little bit of white showing from the burp cloth. Again, that's just a purple. Uh, you know what we'll do? We'll do it this way. Um, go ahead and just fold it over right there where your burp cloth ends. I don't know why I was trying to do it the other way. Fold it down, iron it. My camera's in the way, making it difficult to iron. Again, make sure this top part is still folded down. We'll do the same on the other side. Just fold it over right where your uh, burp cloth ends. So there's no real like uh, measurement for this because it just depends on how wide you made your cotton fabric or, you know, I keep calling it cotton fabric. This is cotton too, but you know what I mean. Okay, so now we can flip it up and I find it's best, let's go ahead and press this bottom I find it's best to pin the bottom first. That helps kind of keep everything straight. So let's press it. And put some pins, if I can find my pins. Just a couple of quick ones. Again, this just kind of helps keep, because this will, sh the burnt cloth itself shifts a lot. So, just kind of eyeball it, keep it nice and pretty. You're gonna have a little, you know, it's not gonna be a perfect line over here. Again, that's okay. I prefer that than having um, some of the woven cotton, the quilt cotton, let's call it quilt cotton. Having the quilt cotton hanging over, I just think it's a better, look and will um, keep you from worrying about fraying. Also going to pin this top here because your burp cloth isn't going to fray. This will, so you got to make sure all of your seams are enclosed and work on this side just a smidge. And then all you have to do is go over and top stitch it uh, maybe a little bit less than a quarter inch all the way around but that's kind of personal preference and I usually do my uh, when I'm top stitching something I usually change my stitch length to more like a 4.5 or some of my pins are not awesome uh, I change it to more like a 4.5 or a 5.0 to get a nicer stitch length but that that might depend on your um, sewing machine. So let, let's go sew around this.
Okay, so I did that. I sewed around the whole thing like you saw, and then that's it. It's done. It's let me fold it. I'll fold it all pretty like people do to make it presentable. So there's that one. I'll fold it better, but basically, and then the back, you know, you can see we just sewed that square. So even the back looks pretty nice. So I've got that one done. I also did the UT one off camera. And so now I just have that final one. And I think I was gonna use the same fabric on both of these, but I think on this one, I'm gonna use this fabric because it matches that uh, hot pink really well. So I'll get this one done and then these are ready to go. This is a local person. Uh, if you do not spread the word that you embroider, you are missing out. Uh, I'm one of those people that um, very few of my sales come from Etsy. Almost everything comes locally. So be sure to uh, make sure people know what you do. But that's it for today, guys. Um, I hope that you found this useful. If you did, please uh, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for stopping by.